So this is our last exercise on the system curve, exercise number three. We're going to analyze what happens when we change a valve from maybe 100% open to 50% open. So essentially you know that if you close a valve, you're going to increase friction, and if you increase friction means you need more pump requirements. So let's do it. Same system as we've been using before. And the thing here, guys, is that we got this static head. The static head must be the same for both systems, but since 50% curve has more friction, recall that this is more friction because of it is partially closed, and this is totally open, so this is a little bit less friction. So whenever you increase the velocity, this will skyrocket. This will maintain the overall. This is actually exactly the same graph I use in exercise number one. This graph right here with these values. I only added the one of 50%. Of course, you increase the value of the friction loss. As velocity increases, friction loss increases as with the square power. So why do we want it to, sh uh, to close the valve or to do something like that? Is to control flow rate, reduce volumetric flow rate, or even to match, we we're going to see that later, we want to match it with a pump that we already have. Let's say a pump is very, I don't know how to tell you, like, let's say it's very strong, so if we use the system with 100% open valve, it will uh, move a lot of fluid, so we don't want that, so we close it, we increase the, the friction, and now we have the desired flow rate. So that's why we might want to include that. Uh, for example, if we want to, this will be later, we're going to see that we need to match the pump curve, but that's for the next section. And we have our system curve, which is this one right here. Let's say it's 100% open, and this is 50% open. So let's say our efficiency is very high in this point. And efficiency here is not that high, and we want to move or shift the system curve. We could either reduce the pipe diameters, which I think is relatively complex, uh, hard, and not convenient, or we could use a valve and close it a little bit, and we'll increase the friction. But even though I increase friction, I'm working in a more efficient uh, curve of my pump. So that's one reason why you would want to do that. This right here, just to show you that for the same flow rate, I got different pump requirements. So of course, if I close a little bit or I throttle the valve, I will increase the pump requirement. The same goes right here. Let's say we have this operation point. Operation point zero is, let's say, very it's very optimal, let's say efficiency is very high, we require less horsepower to operate, we require uh, less maintenance, we have a net NSPH acceptable, and let's say this point right here is not that cool, it has low efficiency, we require more energy, and so on. So let's see, this is the normal curve at 100%, and let's say we throttle 20%, we will increase the friction in that way that our curve goes a little bit more steep, but will be in the operation point we desire. So right here, with the same volumetric flow rate, yes, I know, you're going to use less pumping here, but this is the optimal because we need to, to let's say, have the best point in the pump and in the curve. So the system curve is a little bit complex to move. The pump curve is a little bit easier because you can get other pump. But many times you got a pump which is fixed or you don't have that much uh, selection on pumps. So you need to move the pump curve. Oh, sorry, the system curve. So how do you do that with the valves? Essentially, if you increase friction or you close the valve, you increase the head, which means this will be always over the one of the 100%. Doing this requires energy, of course, more energy drop or friction loss, we require more energy. This means we're going to lose a little bit more money 
on the operation cost, but we will have the best flow rate expected. And not only that, we will maybe work in the best operation point of the pump, which may will may or will eventually be the best uh, I would say best operation point. And finally, when you do all the numbers, when you do the numbers on the pump, you do the numbers on the system, you do the numbers on the maintenance, this point is actually the best point to operate. And once again, this was a very easy example on pump curves and system curves. If you want more, go to part one, incompressible flow, you will get way more sub problems, squeezes, slideshows, and much more. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user friendly interface. So, for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.